Yes. Okay, so thank you very much, Yasin, for the Francesca. I am Valentina, <laughs> actually, for everybody. But yeah, and thank you very much, Luca, for this organization. It's always very nice to be here. Uh, so yes, today I will talk about the Sabrimanian soap bubbles. And this is the plan of the talk. So I, I will first give an introduction, to, an introduction to classical soap bubble clusters. That is, introduce the type of problem. And then I will talk about the Sabrimanian perimeter and give like a very brief introduction to the Sabrimanian isoperimetric problem. And then I will actually talk about some results which uh, happen only on the, in the Grushin plane, so a two-dimensional Sabrimanian structures, and which are in collaboration with Giorgio Stefani and with Giorgio Stefani and Aldo Pratelli uh, in an ongoing work. So, okay. The type of problem that I'm going to present is the following. We consider a manifold, a smooth manifold of dimension n, endowed with two types of measure, a volume measure and a perimeter measure. That is something that we use to measure n-dimensional and n-minus-one-dimensional objects. And the soap bubble problem, which is also called the minimal partition problem, is the following. Given n volumes, you want to consider all cluster of sets which are composed by m chambers with given volumes. So here I draw something which, is, which has connected chambers, but this is not like, uh, required in this class, so it might be also disconnected. And the minimal partition problem, and here the clusters are, the chambers are pairwise disjoint. So the problem is to minimize the global perimeter of this cluster of chambers. And by global perimeter, I mean something that measures all the interfaces once. So here, for instance, I want to measure the interface just once. And so the correct uh, um, perimeter uh, functional is this one, which is defined, so this works, in the following way. We take one half, the sum of the, no, yes, sorry, one half the sum of the perimeter of each chamber, which is the red thing here, so we count once the perimeter of each chamber, and then, and then, and then, we count, no, it worked, okay, and then we count once the perimeter of the exterior chamber, which doubles all the interfaces. So with this one half, we're actually measuring once all the pieces of the boundary, basically. So, okay, the minimal partition problem uh, has been a very like, good subject of studies for uh, a lot of researchers in calculus on variations and geometric measure theory. So let me start by giving you some, like the results, uh, like an overview of the results in the classical case. So for the moment, we consider the Euclidean case. The manifold is just Rn, uh, endowed with the standard, the Georgi perimeter, and with the Lebesgue measure. So first of all, existence of solutions is granted by an Algren results, uh, which proves, mono moreover, that minimal clusters have some regularity properties. In particular, the boundary of a minimal cluster is smooth outside a singular set, which has n minus one dimension, Hausdorff dimension zero. So this is a first existence and qualitative result, but then only in dimension three, Jim Taylor proved actually a characterization of the type of singularities that may appear in minimizing clusters. And these are only of two types. So if you take a minimizer, um, a minimal cluster, then its boundary is the union of smooth surfaces that can meet in two types of singularities. First, they can meet along uh, like an edge, which is called the plateau border, border and, uh, and you have three pieces of surface that meet exactly at 120 degrees. And the second type of singularity, uh, uh, sorry, appear when four of these plateau borders meet in fourth in an angle which is called the tetraedrical angle, which is drawn there, over there. And so this result is, holds in dimension three. It has been an announced at some point also in higher dimension, but actually a proof didn't appear. 
So for the moment it's still open, the structure of singularities in higher dimension and it is actually a very big problem already in the Euclidean case. But of course it passed to the two-dimensional case and in, two in the two-dimensional case minimizing clusters uh, can meet only uh, in threes at, a at an angle of 120 degrees. So we, we only have one type of possible singularity in two dimensions. So these are the qualitative properties, but, but of course we would like to see what are the solutions of these like uh, minimal partition problems. And the first case is the case of one given volume, so one chamber. This is the isoperimetric problem. We want to minimize perimeter under volume constraint, and we know very well that in the Euclidean case, solutions are metric balls that are round balls. What happens we, if we consider two given volumes, so we want to minimize the global perimeter of uh, uh, a configuration, a double bubble with given two volumes. We know the answer in, all, in any dimension, and actually solutions are called standard double bubbles. I will describe first uh, the, the, the planar case because it's easier to see. You just have to take three pieces, of course, which are of constant mean curvature. So you can think of, of three pieces of circle or maybe a segment, and they have to meet at 120 degrees, taking the volume that you are uh, giving. And in n-dimensional situation, the standard double bubbles are just three n minus one dimensional spherical caps intersecting at an n minus one dimensional sphere at an angle of 120 degrees. So actually the proof of this theorem is not obvious at all, and it has a long story. So it started in 1993 with a proof in the plane, and then a proof in R3, and then it has been extended to all dimensions just in 2008. And there are many technical difficulties in this type of problems, for instance, proving the connexity of the chambers and proving some symmetries of the minimal configurations. And so it's quite difficult to do that. Uh, and that's why the story is quite long. And in fact, if we consider a minimal partition problem with, with more chambers, for instance, with three given volumes, the solution is available only in dimension two for the moment. And in dimension two, the minimal configurations, the minimal configuration is the standard triple bubble. So each chamber has to touch uh, each other. For instance, the caterpillar configuration, you can imagine three bubbles, one after the other. This is not the best thing that you can do, and in the plane this is proved in this theorem. But the problem is open in um, like higher dimensions. So, and actually, to my knowledge, this is what we know about, like basically, these are the known results in minimal partition problems. In fact, if you consider more than three chambers, the problem is open in any dimension. If you want, actually, in the infinite dimensional, in the infinite number of chamber case, uh, there is a, like, a result which is known as the Hales theorem or the Honeycomb theorem. And here, actually, uh, you have to think that you want to minimize locally the perimeter. So you want to tessellate the plane and minimize locally the perimeter uh, by choosing chambers which are of equal volumes. And it is known that the minimal configuration is given by the hexagonal shape. So, okay, but there, this is only in dimension two, and a lot is open also uh, in higher dimensions. So this is like a bit the uh, summary of uh, minimal partition problems in the Euclidean case. And I want to give you some examples also in the Riemannian case. So we consider a Riemannian manifold endowed with a Riemannian perimeter and the Riemannian volume. Existence of solutions and the structure of singularities, so in three dimensions, for instance, two and three dimensions, uh, pass from the Euclidean to the Riemannian case. And we start considering some solutions. So for instance, the, for the isoperimetric problem, what is known is that, for instance, if, if you consider uh, the n-sphere or the hyperbolic space, then the, the isoperimetric set is still given by a metric ball, by the metric ball. Um, but this is actually only in, in these two particular situations and in other manifolds, it's, it's not known. And for the two bubble, 
cluster problem, so for the double bubble problem, uh, there are several, several type of types of results. Some of them are a, of type uniqueness results. For instance, on the two sphere, the unique double bubble is still the standard double bubble, so you consider three spherical caps, so three constant mean curvature uh, cores on the sphere, and you let them touch in 120 degrees, at 120 degrees. But there are other type of situations where you have uh, non-uniqueness of solutions, and the, the, the solution that you choose depends on, uh, on the volumes that you give, so in, in, of, on the volumes that you want to attend in minimizers. So what we want to do is to study this type of problem in the context of subramanian um, geometry, and actually more precisely just in the Grushin plane. But uh, I would like to give uh, like a, a very brief intro introduction to subramanian perimeter and subramanian isoperimetric problem. Yes? Uh, can you uh, are there uh, uh, Libigromo of isoperimetric type to the double uh, bubble problem? I don't know. I don't know. We can discuss yeah. later, <laughs> yeah. yeah. OK. But, but you mean, uh, mayb yeah, maybe we can discuss later. Um, OK, so yes, OK. So what we want to do is to study the minimal partition problem for a subramanian perimeter. So here I just recall what the minimal partition problem is, and we want to take a subramanian perimeter structure. So what is the subramanian perimeter? Here I consider, so in this talk I will always consider uh, the, manifold, the base manifold to be Rn, and to be given a generating family of vector fields, which are called x1, xr, and r is less than or equal to n. So in this situation, so in this talk, we always consider as a volume measure the Lebesgue measure, so a smooth measure on our end. And the perimeter measure is defined following the De Giorgi definition of perimeter just by replacing in the definition of perimeter the divergence uh, with respect to the Lebesgue measure, so the, 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 the derivation with, with respect to all the coordinates, this type of horizontal divergence. And what we want to do is to study minimal partition problems in the Grushin plane, alpha in the sense that I put a, an exponent alpha in the, in the second vector field. But first, of course, there are many op open questions in the Heisenberg groups. And so as a first example of subramanian perimeter, I would like to talk about the Heisenberg isoperimetric problem. So here I just wrote the vector fields because I have some two in the vector fields that made the minus four in the commutator that are not maybe the, use, the usual notation for some of you. And the first remark is that if we want to see what H, so sets of finite H perimeter are, we have already to think that there's an example made by Kierkeim and Sarah Cassano that tells us that there exists a set having locally finite H perimeter, so subramanian perimeter, which is a Euclidean fractal. So we are actually working with thi things that are much more, much less regular than the standard perimeter uh, things. And so about the isoperimetric problem, there's a, so the isoperimetric problem in the Heisenberg group is an open problem, and there's a conjecture made by Pansu in 1982 that claims what follows. First of all, there exist isoperimetric sets, and then the unique isoperimetric set is made in the following way. You take up to dilations and translations, you take two points on the vertical axis, you take a geodesic that connect them, and then you rotate it, or better, if you want to take all the ge geodesics that connect two points on the vertical axis, this forms a surface, which is C2, but not C3, and which has horizontal, constant horizontal mean curvature. And this is the boundary of the conjecture isoperimetric set in the Heisenberg group. So in this last point in this slide, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, the conjecture is like meaningful in a sense that in this uh, framework, isoperimetric sets cannot be metric balls with respect to the uh, CC dist with respect to the Carnot karate Odery distance, and this has been proved by Monti in 2000. So of course, the conjecture is still open, but there are some partial proofs of mainly of two types. First type 
you take an isoperimetric set and you assume some further properties on the isoperimetric set, and then you are able to prove that the isoperimetric set is actually the Ponsu uh, bubble. So under, for instance, C2 regularity, convexity, and so some other hypotheses. And another type of result is the characterization of the minimizer on a restricted class of sets. For instance, uh, in the class of spherically symmetric sets. So if, if you consider the class of spherically symmetric sets, you're able to prove that there exists one, only one minimizer, and this is the Pansu set. But why are we able to do that only under symmetry assumption? So in this case, my answer is that the rearrangements that we know don't work if you uh, take away a symmetry assumption on the set. So we are not able for the moment to build a rearrangement which is useful for the Pansu conjecture. Uh, okay, just to conclude this introduction, the conjecture has been actually generalized to other structures, for instance, to the sphere, to the unisphere in C2 with its contact structure. And, okay, so this is the three di more than three-dimensional case, and this is hard, open, but if we move to the Grushin case, which is a two-dimensional case, actually things are much easier, and you are, for the moment, so, and you're able to uh, show, like, to classify isoperimetric sets. So let me start with, by introducing my notation for the Grushin plane. So you take R2, which is not written on the slide, but you take R2. And given alpha bigger than or equal to zero, we take these two vector fields, dx and norm of x to the alpha dy. Here I just copied the definition of perimeter in the Grushin setting, but of course it is much uh, more clear uh, its representation formula on smooth sets. So if you take a smooth set, set in R2, and you want to measure its Grushin perimeter, alpha perimeter, you can just compute, it, you can just represent it as a surface integral with respect to the Hausdorff one measure of a kernel. And this kernel is just the norm of the horizontal, of the unit normal, where the second component is multiplied by a non-isotropic weight. So you just take first component to the square, second component to the square, multiplied by a weight. So what does this formula mean? So, okay, now, first a remark. If alpha is equal to zero, you already see that the alpha perimeter, in this case, is just the Euclidean standard perimeter. You're just computing the Euclidean standard perimeter. But when alpha is different from zero, First of all, you see that you, ha you don't have invariance under um, horizontal translations of the perimeter. And the second thing that I want to say is more like a philosophical thing. If you imagine to, you want to minimize this perimeter close to the y-axis, so close to where x is, equal to, x is equal to zero, so what is convenient is to put all the possible weight in this part of the normal and here zero. So what it is convenient close to the y-axis is to be really vertical, much more vertical than in the Euclidean case, and this is something that we expect in our results, actually. So as I was saying before, the isoperimetric problem in the Grushin plane has been solved by Monti and Morbidelli, and the theorem says the following. Given a volume, V, uh, there exists only one isoperimetric set up to vertical, trans vertical translations. And in fact, from this formula here, you can, just, you can already imagine that vertical translations are allowed and don't change the perimeter. So up to vertical translations, uh, there exists a unique isoperimetric set. And this is given by an anisotropic dilation of a set which is described, so it is, rotationally so, so it is rotationally symmetric, and it is described by a profile function, which is explicit and depends on alpha in this way. And in particular, this profile function uh, closes, it closes vertically, so on the x-axis we are actually smooth with this set, and it has zero derivative at, at zero, which means that we are actually flat, much more flat than the sphere, the Euclidean sphere. So here you have your minimizer for the isoperimetric problem, and why this theorem is possible, because here rearrangements work. We are able to perform rearrangements in this situation. The last comment 
is that for alpha is equal equals to one, this profile function is actually up to a constant, exactly the profile function of the Pansu set. So there's this uh, connection with the Heisenberg isoperimetric problem in the Grushin setting. So what we do, what we want to do is to study, finally, the minimal partition problem in the Grushin setting for m, uh, given, volu for m given volumes. And I recall here, yes. Yes, so if alpha is natural, which is easier to talk about, this is C alpha plus, uh, plus, un, uh, plus one, sorry, but not C alpha plus, uh, um, plus two, sorry. So C alpha plus one, but not C alpha plus two, which is exactly the same regularity as the Pansu set, if you take alpha equals to one. C2, but not C3. Okay, yes. So what, what, what maybe I wrote on the slide, but I didn't mention, is that in all these class of problems, uh, the regularity theory of perimeter minimizing, minimizer is completely open. I mean, not completely. There are partial results that I like, mentioned maybe before. So there are partial results by, for instance, I just wrote three, the three that I know better, Monti, Stefani, and Vittone. Uh, but the problem is open. So in the Euclidean standard case, you know that minimizers for the perimeter are smooth. And then you use its smoothness to characterize them. You, you do a lot of things. But in this setting, it is open. And you would like, for instance, to prove that in the Heisenberg group, the optimal regularity is the C2 regularity. But it's open. OK. So I was saying, yes, we want to study the minimal partition problem for the alpha perimeter. So I recall how to measure the perimeter of a cluster. You take one half sum of the perimeter of each chamber plus the perimeter of the exterior chamber or also the perimeter of E. This is the same thing. And you consider in the class of sets which are composed by M pairwise disjoint sets with given Lebesgue measure. And what I'm going to do is two types of things. First, I will characterize a solution for the double bubble problem associated to this perimeter under an additional assumption, which is a symmetry assumption. And then I will actually try to talk about an ongoing work in which we prove existence of minimal clusters for any M, but we are not able to characterize them. So first is more a classification result, and then it is an existence result. So I will start with the first one. The problem is the double bubble problem. So we consider sets which are composed by two chambers of given volumes, and we minimize this global perimeter. But actually, the problem is too difficult, because we, if we want to characterize them, somehow we think of using rearrangements. And in this huge class, we are not able, for the moment, to uh, perform rearrangements. And so we make some additional hypotheses. First of all, we don't consider any two given volumes, but we consider only equal volumes of the two chambers. Second hypothesis is on the type of clusters that we allow. And we actually consider two possible cluster, uh, class of clusters, double bubbles with vertical interface, which means that I assume that one of the chambers is on the left, of the y, on the right of the y-axis, and the other is on the left of the right of the y-axis, which means that the only type of interface can happen on exactly on the y-axis, which is written here. So E, which is the global chamber, uh, on the right and E on the left have the same volume, so they can touch only at the y-axis. Or second type of problem is the, like if you want the contrary, we, uh, we take two clusters which are up, above, and below the x-axis. So the only type of interface which is uh, allowed happens on the x-axis. So these are the results about these two uh, minimal partition problems. First of all, given a volume, Solutions to both problems, so vertical interface and horizontal interface, exist. And moreover, we are able to characterize them. We start from the double bubble with vertical interface. If E is a minimizer 
to the double bubble problem with vertical interface, then we can write it through a profile function that we are going to rotate around the axis. And this profile function is explicit. I didn't write here the expression be because it is not, not nice, actually. But it is explicit. It depends on alpha and on the given volume. And it is continuous on, the closed, on, on a closed interval and smooth out on the open interval. And in particular, in the case of alpha bigger than 0, so non-Euclidean case, the derivative is, is 0, which means that also the double bubble configuration has, is flat around the y-axis. So what, what we get is something like that. We recall that for alpha equals to 0, we have the Euclidean perimeter. So we know that we have to end up with a standard double bubble with 120 degrees, degrees rule here. <coughs> and this is what happens. And this is like a butterfly thing which happens, this is the drawing for alpha equals to 1, but it is flat for any alpha bigger than 0 around the y-axis. Double bubble with horizontal interface. So we have existence and we can characterize the double bubble in the following way. So first of all, so this is the construction of the double bubble with a horizontal interface. Take an isoperimetric set, here I draw the Euclidean case and the alpha equals to 1 case. Take an isoperimetric set in the alpha bigger than 0 case. We know its existence from Monti and Morbidelli. Translate it vertically of a fixed quantity that depends on alpha, and in particular it depends on the isoperimetric profile function of the, of, of, of the Grushin plane, so on the isoperimetric function, on the profile function of the isoperimetric set. Dilate it in order to have your preferred volume above the x-axis and reflect it uh, on, on, below the x-axis. So in the case alpha equals to 0, this gives you again the standard double bubble with uh, meeting at 120 degrees. And in the case alpha bigger than 0, it gives you this configuration, a type of configuration in which the angle here depends on alpha and on the volume. So it is not 120 degrees. So first of all, first question, what happens to the 120 degrees rule in this setting? So we have two configurations for our two problems. The first one is flat. The second one depends on alpha and on the volume. But to answer this question, we can use a tool which has been introduced by Monti and Morbidelli, and which is actually like working only in this two-dimensional case, which is a simple change of variables that brings the alpha perimeter into the Euclidean perimeter and the Lebesgue measure into an anisotropic measure that is this, this one. But the perimeter is changed into the Euclidean perimeter. And what happens is that if you take the transformed set with respect to this change of variables of your minimizing configuration so for the double bubble vertical interface, double bubble horizontal interface, the 120 degrees is actually satisfied. So in this transformed plane, you have the 120 degrees which is satisfied. And this, if you want, gives you some hint of how, so it gives you some hint if you would like to prove a regularity theory, a characterization of singularities in this Grushin structure. Yes? Uh, can you go back to the transformation to give an explicit form for the angle? Uh, this is the transformation. Yes, but, uh, you can Sorry? This is the transformed uh, bubble as uh, respect to uh, one another. Yes, the transformed bubble. Can you go back in your explicit formula of the angle in terms of angle? Yes, actually, you can give the, an explicit formula, but this is actually. So here we are considering the Lebesgue measure. We are not considering the Riemannian measure. So we wouldn't expect some specific, I wouldn't say that we expect some specific uh, rule for the meeting of angles in this transform, in the, in the Grushin. The, yes, of course, here something happens different than away from here. Yes, you can go back. Actually, you can go back. You can write explicitly your angles. Of course, you can do that. But OK, so if I have time in the last slide, I will make a comment. 
so okay, so you have this 120 degrees which is satisfied in the transformed plane. And this gives you some hint about how the regularity theory should work in this Grushin plane. Not, I'm not saying that it goes beyond that. I, I mean, not in the Heisenberg group. This is just a two-dimensional case thanks to this uh, change of variables. So how to, what is the idea of the proof? It is to use a rearrangement theorem that allows you, thanks to the symmetry hypothesis that we are considering, that allows you to, cons to construct a cluster which has strictly, so less perimeter, not strictly, uh, less perimeter than a given cluster, preserving the volumes. So, and which gives you also this characterization. If you assume that E is a solution, here I chose to write double bubble with vertical interface, but actually it's also for the other, for the one with horizontal interface. So if you have a minimizer that has the same perimeter as it's rearranged, then you know that the set was already uh, your rearranged set. And the nice property of the rearranged set is that it is bounded and it is locally Lipschitz. So it gives you enough regularity to perform a first variation and to try to characterize minimizers. And that's actually what we do. So existence is, of minimizers is then proved via direct method, thanks to the fact that you can always find an, a bounded minimizing sequence. And then the, the characterization of minimizers is always to, done through this rearrangement, because you can always assume your minimizers to be Lipschitz, so you can compute derivatives. And then you find, you, you end up with the formulas that I showed you in the two theorems. Um, so okay, last comment on, in this section. Uh, we have two problems with assumptions on the type of interface. But of course we would like to say something about the, gen the general problem. So in the case alpha equals to zero, both problems have solution the double bubble, mm, mm, the standard double bubble with 120 degree rules satisfied. And in, we, in, when alpha is bigger than zero, for instance, alpha equals to one, we have two different configurations. And as a first thing, we would like to compare them and see which one of them is better. And the calculation shows you that the one which is better is this one, is the one with horizontal interface. And how can you interpret that? This configuration is actually made starting from isoperimetric sets, because you could translate them vertically and then dilate it, perform some things, and obtain this configuration. But a configuration of this type cannot be obtained by isoperimetric set, in, a sen in the sense that you cannot translate an isoperimetric set without changing its perimeter. So somehow, this is our like philosophical explanation of how, why this is minimal um, among them. But of course the problem is still open and actually we are trying to investigate uh, in this direction by computing, uh, the, by, by, yeah, by, by computing constant mean curvature curves in the Grushin plane and see which are the types of uh, double bubbles that respect the 120 degrees rule in the transformed pay, plane we can do. So we would like to see if, it might be actually what we expect, is that these are the only two types of bubbles that we can make by constant mean curvature curves that, that uh, admit the 120 degrees rule in the transformed plane. So this was the characterization of solutions for a double bubble type problem. And then in, the, in, what, yeah, in what I left, I pass to existence of M clusters in the Grushin plane, for which we have for the moment this result. So given M and given any chosen volume, V1, Vm, you always have existence of solutions to the minimal partition problems in the class of clusters with these M different volumes that are given. So actually this uh, enters in a more general context in which we would like to study some uh, an, um, anisotropic uh, minimal partition problems. That is, we would like to study perimeter P alpha with a volume of type uh, uh, X to the beta and see which are the relations between alpha and beta in order to guarantee existence or non-existence 
of solutions. So what is the idea of the proof? It is, if you want, um, a weaker type tree arrangement that goes as follows. So first of all, what we want to do is to prove that any minimizing sequence can be assumed to be bounded, so to be in a box. We want to prove that we can assume any minimizing sequence to be in a box. So we want to have some type of theorem like that. Uh, perimeter is decreasing under some type of uh, deformations and volume is preserved, which is not written here, but volume is preserved. Um, and the set is inside a box. And then we, we are able just to conclude by the direct method, thanks to lower semi-continuity of the perimeter and uh, compactness theorem for BV functions. I am only, only talking about the Lebesgue measure case here. So in this, in this slide, I am only talking about the Lebesgue measure case uh, volume. OK. So and how to prove this blue box there? So you have your cluster that I, that I draw kind of nicely, but it is finite perimeter. The assumption is just that it, it has finite perimeter. So it might be much uh, less nice than that. And you project it into the two directions. So the vertical direction and also the horizontal one. And what you do is you consider the projection on the one dimensional line. So you can bound the length of this projection by the perimeter up to a constant. So you know that you can bound this length. And in particular, you then know that you can cover this one dimensional set by open intervals, which are pair pairwise disjoint, which have finite length. And so what you do is just you consider the structure. So maybe you, you are enlarging a bit here. And you consider the stripe that is above this interval here. And what you want to do in order to guarantee boundedness is just to move the stripe towards the y-axis, for instance, in order to pull everything together and obtain a bounded, a bounded set. And this is actually what we do. So if we consider the projection Oops. On the vertical axis, we are going to have some stripes here, vertical stripes, and we want to move them towards the x-axis. And this is quite easy, actually, because perimeter is invariant under, under vertical translations. So we can just do that. And in the, in the horizontal case, what we do is to move everything towards the x-axis, uh, the y-axis, because this power x to the 2 alpha, this weight x to the 2 alpha that we have in the perimeter is decreasing if you go like closer to the y-axis. So this is basically the idea that works in this case and can be adapted for the more general volume uh, with this weight norm of x to the beta. OK, so to finish, uh, of course, I said that I am choosing the Lebesgue measure for this type of isoperimetric problem, of minimal partition problems. But another possible choice would be the Riemannian singular measure on R2. So this, this, just this uh, measure here. And actually, what uh, we, so in this case, you would like to consider not the alpha perimeter, but the perimeter that is associated with this volume. So it is something of this type, and you have the, this norm of x to the alpha at the denominator. So you end up with something like this. You have a singularity here in the first component. And actually, what in the representation formula, of course. And actually, what uh, we showed, what we found, is that there is, in this case, um, um, change of variables outside the singularity that brings you the whole variational structure, so the perimeter with the <coughs> intrinsic measure into the Euclidean one. And so what you want to do now to study is, like minimal partition problems in this setting is to st like study it in the Euclidean case and bring it back to the uh, singular case. And with that, 
I conclude and thank you for your attention. <laughs>